still a physicist and uh, I still teach graduate courses in toxicology and health effects of electromagnetism at McGill University. Uh, page 13 of the da raw, uh, red data can be reworked to group the results according to tissue types, uh, brain and nervous tissues, heart and other organs. Uh, this cell tissue type classification highlights that brain and nervous tissues show carcinogenic action at various stages in various locations within the body, particularly if one accepts hyperplasia as one of the stages of cancer development. The mechanisms of metabolic disruption by electromagnetic fields proceeds through the Lorentz force, interference with hydrogen bridges and electron tunneling, and is understood down to the quantum mechanical level. So I really challenge the notion that there are no mechanisms to support this. From a very basic mechanism of action on free electrons and protons, EMFs have downstream effects that reflect the complexity of cell metabolism. Biological systems are very intricate, and the views of engineering are generally too simple to take, to take that into account. EMFs cannot be expected to have those responses are similar to those of alkylating agents, because instead of destroying chemical structures, they interact with enzymes and restrict and disorganize metabolism. Therefore, observations of tumor incidents that are considered in your report as equivocal, because they fail to display a classic dose response, the most case of schwannomas in the heart among the rats in the lowest RF exposure group, should be taken more seriously because the agent at hand operates in a different way than expected traditional chemical toxicology. Our work has found that past given threshold of action, EMFs can, for some variables, have an almost flat response over two orders of magnitude. Soon after the work of Wertheimer in 1979 on ELF, a number of scientists documented the mechanisms of action of pulsed microwaves at the level of mitochondria. Aaron Sanders at Duke University pointed already in 1985 to microwave inhibition of mitochondrial electrons transport chain function of ATP production. I found uh, this group, the surviving members of this group, six months ago, and I asked them, what work, what impact did your work have? They said it was completely ignored then and it continues to be completely ignored. Yet, these people have 80% of the mechanism that they understand to be working these phenomena. We pointed to the, to the same oxidative phosphorylation inhibition associated with ELF magnetic fields describing the impairment of ATP synthase and its downstream effects on uh, AMPK alpha the changes produced by fields were similar to those of oligomycin administered and of oxygen deprivation. When oxidative phosphorylation in mitochondria is inhibited at the level of ATP synthase, delta Vm, the mitochondrial membrane potential, is increased. A 7% increase in this potential increases ROS production by 70%, that's MIWA 2003. Further, enzymatic reactions, the dehydrogenases that depend on deep proton tunneling that Inagaki 2013 are modified, leading to difficulties in ROS detoxification that have been extensively documented by numerous authors, Yakaminko and Dazdag. The susceptibility of the brain to oxygen deprivation is well known. In the context of this project, where multiple observations surround the cells producing myelin, it should be remembered that myelin vesicles contain functional FOF1 ATP synthase and respiratory chain complexes and are able to conduct aerobic metabolism to support axonal energy demands. In myelin vesicles, FOF1 ATP synthase activity decreased in the presence of specific inhibitors such as oligomycin A, 
Rivera 2015, the substance that in our hands, Lee 2013, suppress oxidative phosphorylation under very, very small ELF magnetic fields. Although some have claimed that exposures used in the NTP TP are high in comparison with human exposures, this criticism ignores the fact that this, in the study, two years of rodent life are meant to represent the full human lifespan. If anything, this study underestimates the effects, and I would expect more cancers, as well as other health problems, diabetes in particular, to manifest later on, should one use rodents with 70-year longevity. Whether it is Amplitude modulation, FM modulation, phase modulation, or pulse modulation, biology always finds a way to extract the data from the carrier. If you have doubts about phase modulation, you can re, uh, review the work of Theodore Litovitz, who's now passed away at the Catholic University in Washington on ornithine decarboxylase. And the unfortunate, unfortunate equation that I want to leave with you is that this means that if you increase bandwidth, the chances of interferences and consequences to biological systems also increased. I also really like Dr. Lin's comment about the fact that we don't have any controls. And those rats that we think are controls are in fact exposed to ELF, who have effects that are comparable to microwaves as we use them. And there's also the problem of genetic drift imposed by all of this exposure. And for those who know about the mitochondrial and the to nucleus uh, interactions, there's a selection barrier there that is weakened by exposure to these fields that can lead the whole of the biota on this planet to essentially genetic, uh, genetic drift that could be irreversible. So those are very, very serious consequences that are not even discussed in the literature. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Morris. Uh, questions from the panel? Okay, if none, we will move on to our last speaker, uh, Dr. Ron Milner. Uh, 